holding the powerful accountable from Washington, D.C. to right here in southern New England. This is 10 News Conference with Gene Valicente. And good morning. This is a special decision 2023 10 News Conference debate, primary debate with the Republican candidates running in Rhode Island's first congressional special election to replace David Cicilline. Joining us now, Terry Flynn and Gary Leonard. They're the Republicans. We're dispensing with opening statements, though we will have closing statements. I'll question the candidates who are free to exchange back and forth in a civil fashion. It's largely up to them, though, to defend themselves and fact check each other. I'm here to moderate, keep it moving, and our timekeepers will make sure we're keeping track to make it fair and balanced in the back. All right, welcome Republicans. Nice to have you in. First of all, Thank Republicans. You. Isn't the conventional, is conventional wisdom a Republican cannot win congressional race, congressional district number one? Gary Leonard, you take the first question. Oh, I absolutely believe a Republican win can win in the state of Rhode Island. But John Chafee yep. was our Republican senator. Ron Makeley represented this district as a Republican. I believe if you get your message out with the voters in Rhode Island, you tell them your story, you talk yeah. about leadership. I absolutely believe a Republican can win in this state. Uh -huh. and, and I think Rhode Island's ready for, for a change. And I think it makes a ton of sense for Rhode Island, from a voting perspective, to send a balanced delegation down to Washington, D.C. House of Representatives right now is controlled yep. by the Republicans, it looks like, for the foreseeable future. I'd, if I'm a voter, I'd rather send someone down there that's going to sit at the big table than the little table. All right, same question to you now, Terry. A Republican cannot win this. That's what I've heard. That's why we have two relative newcomers to politics. Isn't it the truth? It's, an, it's a new look, it's a new age. Yeah. I, I honestly think a lot of people I've been talking to, they have lost faith in the political system. And a lot of people, they are not voting, they're not registering. Uh, they're disenfranchised, they're, they're disengaging. Yeah. And I, I, what I'm hearing is that it's because they feel that decisions are being made for them, but not with their voice. So this is a chance, and a part of the messaging from my campaign is look at the candidate uh, more than the media. Yeah. A lot of those war chests will buy name recognition, and that voters are smart. They know this. Yeah. So it's time to look at the candidate, not so much the party labels, because they're becoming very blurred, almost meaningless. They're being used to strategize elections. Yeah. Uh, Could I just challenge? I don't think they're meaningless. There are 12 Democrats running. Yeah. There are two unknown Republicans running. Your party passed on any big names who considered it, but then bowed out. Come on, uh, uh, Gary. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't heard from you. We don't know who you are. You're a new person. Welcome, by the way. It's a Thank rough you. game. And Thank you're you. to be applauded for stepping in. Well, I but you know what I'm saying. You've got 12 Democrats, and they think Sabina Matos might run away with this, and they say the Republicans can't win. That's why nobody from your party with any name recognition is in the race. Well, Gene, I, I served my country for 30 yeah. years. I want to continue serving my country. I want to con continue serving right. the state of Rhode Island. That, that, first and foremost, is the most important thing, I think, anybody that's throwing their hat in the ring. Mm -hmm. I, and, and again, back to what I said earlier, I absolutely believe this is a winnable race, else I would not have jumped in it. Yeah. I understand there's a bunch of candidates on the other side. I personally, don't, I personally don't believe they have the experience, leadership experience that I do have, mm -hmm. and that's what I intend to bring to Washington, right. D.C. on behalf of Rhode Island. This is the race in Congressional District number one. When Alan Fung ran in number two, Speaker McCarthy came in. All kinds of money came in. You could see a from a reporter's point of view, there's no Speaker McCarthy coming up on your behalf, unless I don't know about that. So let's be fair here. It's a long shot, a heavy lift for you. It is, but it's not a requirement. The only requirement needed to run for office is a declaration of candidacy and 500 signatures on the nomination mm -hmm. papers. And, and so it's open to everyone. It is very encouraging, actually, that as a grassroots campaign, because we do not have the, the big war chest that everybody yep. else has, that we can still get in the game and participate and make a difference. And that's, again, bringing back that engagement to anybody who really wants to help people. Yep. Okay, let's get to the issues now. Gary Leonard, uh, the uh, Fed chair just indicated we may be raising interest rates again. That's his effort to tamp down inflation. Is that the right strategy? Do you support that? Raising interest rates again at this point? I, 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 I think there's a bigger problem here, and it's it, it, our overall, overall economy. Right. We have a spending problem in this country. Uh, we need to do a hell of a lot better job balancing 
our budget uh, and not overspending. I'll let you flesh that out, but my question was, is raising interest rates the right thing to do? Will that help or hurt inflation right now? It's, That's it's, a yes or no. It's, 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 it's not quite a yes or no. And, and, and he's trying, the Fed's trying to take the steam out of the inflation. Okay. So there's a balancing act we're trying to do here. I, I, we do know by, by increasing the interest rates, it's going to make a cost of a home more expensive right. than others. So that's not good with Rhode Islanders already we're raising with, with home What do you want me to put you down are. for, yes or no, on raising interest rates? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Is it, is it don't do it, do it? What should I put? You but, see, this is what people say, you know, like politicians can't give a straight answer. That's well, a pretty straight question. Well, it, 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 it you, is. Is it, it you support raising interest it, rates, it, yes or no? It, 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 is, a, it is a straight question, but, but it, it's indicative of a larger spending problem we have in our federal government. Yeah. And, and, and the Fed is trying to do is reduce the money supply. That's what's causing the inflation. So trying to balance one, I think what we got to be careful of that we don't put ourselves into t some type of stagflation yeah. that we had in the 1970s. If I put you down for a no, is that fair to you right now? Because that's what I interpreted from your answer. No. No on raising on raising interest rates. Don't do it anymore. No. I, I think I think we need to wait and see. Okay. All right. How about you, Terry? Same simple question. question. Simple yes. Question. So we raise interest rates to tamp down inflation. Yes or no? I, I think the answer is that raising interest rates is a solution. I would not do it short term. I think that there are other policies to lower the cost okay. of living, like uh, control spending of taxpayer dollars. Energy independence would certainly lower the cost of living and uh, domestic manufacturing. So, so not in the short term. Not in the short All term. right. With regard to monetary policy, uh, Larry Summers used to run Harvard, top economic economist for Obama, uh, said uh, we overheated the economy with too much stimulus money. Do you agree with that, Gary? I ab absolutely agree. And this goes back to your previous question. What the Fed's trying yeah. to do is, is take some of the heat out of that, that uh, inflation. So, so we both know that. We, we need to keep going back to how did we get here. And we have a spending problem in the federal government that needs to be addressed. All right, that was more of a forward answer. You, uh, you agree with Larry Summers. How about you? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think that the spending during COVID and since is um, inappropriate. Well, let, me, let me rephrase the question. Okay. Larry Summers said we overheated the economy we with too much stimulus. That's why we're where, that's why we're where we are. Do you agree with that monetary policy? A philosophy that it was uh, the Biden administration spent too much money. Is that I, I do. It's all part of that national debt right. uh, picture, that big picture. I, I believe that the U.S. Uh, revenue, uh, federal report on revenue and spending in, for 2022 was our revenue was uh, 4.9 trillion dollars mm. and spending was 6.3 trillion. So we've got a 1.4 trillion dollar deficit in that year, and that I don't think is going to change. And that's not sustainable, not for our households and not for our country. Okay. So we need m more revenue generating policies to make sure that that gets under control and reversed. Let's hold G it there. Gene, if Go I, ahead. If, Go ahead. If, no, if yeah. I could. So sure. right, right now we're operating at about 2.4% GDP. Mm -hmm. If we can get our GDP up to 4.55% consistently, not this up and down that we've been seeing for the last few years, it'll fix a lot of problems to, to include our, our deficit spending each year. Uh, it'll fix long term our Social Security, Medicare. Yeah. It, it, it'll, it'll do a lot. And, and uh, that's what we ought to be focused on is how, how do we improve our economy and make it consistently operate at 4.55%. Okay. I'll let you just get a quick word so we're about fair and balanced on time. Uh, on I, I assume you're talking manufacturing, Gary? We, we, we absolutely need more manufacturing. I will also say we need, we need to unleash our, all our energy in this country. Okay. Oh, and for Rhode Island, which has a rich history in um, manufacturing prosperity, you've got boat builders in Newport, you've got uh, uh, Raytheon in Portsmouth, mm -hmm. uh, Converse Sneakers in Bristol, American Tourister in Warren, um, you've got uh, Electric Boat in North Kingstown, right. and Hasbro in Pawtucket. Yeah, if, we, if we can, uh, and, and you know, I think that H the Hasbro, U.S. lost... Has Hasbro doesn't manufacture the import where they make they make their toys in China now but uh, well it, it's uh, it's part of that the economy okay. growth and growing but Sorry. I guess I would say that the US they they yeah. lost their dominance in manufacturing because they outsourced I, and and if we can re-energize right. manufacturing in Rhode Island we can bring a lot of opportunities economic opportunities at all levels back I'm, to the state I imagine every Democrat would agree on that we'd like more manufacturing let's hold it a quick break and I'll let you get right back okay. in Gary just stick with us here we got to take a quick break we'll be right back with a Republican debate for congressional district number one
Thank you for turning to 10, your news leader. 10 News Conference with Gene Valicenti continues right now. Welcome back to our 10 News Conference public and debate for the Congressional District Number 1. Uh, Gary, I'll give you 30 seconds just to make an addendum to the last topic. Yeah, We're yeah. talking about inflation and interest rates. Yeah. I didn't get a, a definitive answer from you. Do you want to revise I, that or no, revisit no, it? I, what I'd like to revisit what we were just, just talking about, Gene, I think it's important to note. Um, when, when I'm talking to business leaders, yeah. what they're talking to me about skilled labor, that we have a shortage of skilled labor in, in, in this state. Uh, they point out that Davies Vocational School is the only full-fledged vocational school in the state. There's others that have areas, right. but what they're talking about, let's produce more. And, and I think we need to give our high school students an opportunity other than a path going to college. We need more vocational training in the state. I think we need a vocational school of sorts down yep. in South County, and I think we need one in First District. Okay. And that will provide the labor pool that we need. I would also tell you, I heard one of my Democrat opponents or our Democrat opponents make a comment, we need to attract businesses into this, into this state, mm -hmm. which we know we do, so we can tax them. What we need to do is incentivize them to come here. Okay, so he'd like to see a vocational school, more jobs, send, let's, let's send kids to learn how to become a plumber or lay bricks rather than college. you agree with that? Or do you I, want to refine that? Oh, no, I, I think that that's an obvious. I think it's a growing trend in education, actually, mm -hmm. to have more skills. As you know, it's so hard to get a plumber, an electrician. Uh, I, I think Electric Boat's been looking for welders for uh, years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I do agree. But, you know, industries, we do need industries in Rhode Island, but we need long-term, year-round industries that are going to stay. Uh, so, short, you know, you need these long-term thinking, not, not what's good in the next year or five years, pump out a bunch of graduates and then have nowhere for them to go, or worse, leave the state. Okay. Uh, you got, it has to be something that's going to work for 10, 25, and 50 years. All right, let's move on to things that you might have to deal with if either of you get to Congress, including funding the war in Ukraine. Do you support this proxy war? Uh, with the Russians via Ukraine. We're paying for the bullets and the guns. I don't know how it's not a proxy war. Would you agree with that characterization? Do you support the president's uh, position on this? Gene, I think there's, there's a couple responses for you on that. First of all, I think the White House needs to tell the American public how this war ends. There needs to be an end state. Okay. And it needs to be clear. After serving 30 years in the Marine Corps, you don't go into a war not knowing what you're trying to achieve at the end. I would also tell you, just watching Iraq and Afghanistan, the money that we pumped into that, that the, both of those countries during those 20 years mm -hmm. was that we didn't always account for it. We need to have mechanisms set up in place right. that we understand that our dollars is not going into a pocket of a, a criminal, but it actually is being used for what intended purposes. The third one I would tell you, we have partner nations that are involved in this, to, to include Japan and some of our NATO mm -hmm. allies. We need to make sure and hold them accountable that they're contributing at the same rates percentage-wise that we are. Okay, so accounting for the money, make sure it's not going in a black hole, uh, counting more on our allies to pitch in. But the, th the thrust of the question was, do you support what we're doing in Ukraine, sending billions to Zelensky to fight the Russians? Is, that's a yes or a no as well. Well, it, it, it is, it, it, it's, this is a global, this is a, we need to think of the, this problem in a global sense. China's watching this. Other countries, some of our competitors are watching what, right. what we're doing. From a military perspective, in my experience, right. what this war is starting to look like to me is a little bit of a stalemate, World War okay. I variety. And, and I think from a leadership perspective, the United States, the White House, needs to take a lead in leading right now. We've right. got China trying to take a leadership role, Saudi Arabia trying to take a leadership role. I think the outcome here is a negotiated right. settlement of some sort. Okay, all need, right. And we need to be part of that. All right, but my question as to whether or not you support it, you, you're not really giving me a definitive answer on that, which is you're right. Okay, I ask you, do you support the Biden administration sending billions to, I guess, contain Zelensky? Let me ask the question to you. Do you support what the Biden administration is doing, sending billions to Ukraine to fight the Russians through a proxy war? So long as I can, answer, I can explain the answer that I give. So I'm going to say yes, and I'm, I'm going to say yes because the bottom line is we do not live in a bubble. We live in a, in a global world, and what happens in one country can impact our country and other countries and their citizens. And we need to protect our citizens. And you can't get away from the fact that there are extremist leaders that will do unexpected things. Right. We, we have to have presence in other countries at, at certain times. Right. What I will agree with uh, Gary on is that before any out-of-country activity takes place, there should be benchmarks. 
The first benchmark is termination. And not a date, but an, an achievement, a benchmark mm -hmm. of achievement. When we achieve this, then we will leave. Okay. And we will leave in a, 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 in a planned and um, a strategized right. way. Also, um, you want to assess the returns on investment, and there are two of those. One is the financial. It's not so much accounting for the money. It's what's the return on that financial investment, and what is the return on the potential bloodshed of our military? Um, and so I would like to thank, if you don't mind, our military and our service people, our veterans, right. and our Gold Star families okay. for the quality of life that they've provided Let us. Let me just push back. The yeah, original ahead. question is, do you support the Biden administration sending billions to Zelensky to fight the Russians? I and said the, pr yes. the premise is to contain Putin from going after Poland or another. Do you believe that's an absolute threat? Do you believe that if we don't fight Putin this way, more trouble would come? Do you believe that? At this point in time, I would say yes. Okay. All right. Let's hold it For there. the reasons we'll, given. Uh, duly noted on both <laughs> sides. Thank uh, you. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk about student loans and abortion and other uh, issues of importance in our congressional district debate number one. Welcome back to our Republican debate for Congressional District Number 1. We have done war and peace. We've done the economy. Now let's do some more practical domestic issues. The president wants to forgive student loans for a percentage of students who maybe borrowed too much. Let them have a fresh start. Let them get on with their life. Good idea or bad? Gary. I, I, I don't agree on, on, on forgiving the student, mm -hmm. the student loan debt. Um, serving in the Marine Corps as an officer, uh, I think you probably know you had to go to college to become an officer. The Marines that I was leading were enlisted coming right out of high school. I, I could never see myself standing in front of them saying, thanks for paying off my loan, mm -hmm. have a great weekend. I absolutely disagree, I disagree with this, and I think many Americans do. Okay, assuming that there, uh, some people have maybe bitten off more than they can chew, and they're, they're being crushed by some of them $100,000 worth of debt, they'll never dig themselves out. Do you have a plan to help them dig themselves out? I, 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 or I, or you're, you're on your own, you borrowed to pay it. No, I, th I think uh, one, of the, one of the things that's taken place over the last few years is when we frozen, we froze student loans, right. uh, I, I believe interest continued to accumulate. I've got a personal friend that that's, yeah. that's no, let me, let me just significantly. Uh, student loans were frozen during the pandemic. In fact, they're frozen until the end of next month. Interest was also frozen. Oh, so the frozen. interest is not accumulated. But overall, do you have a larger vision? Well, I'll, listen, maybe I'll let you repay it back income-based or we'll cut the interest. Do you have any kind of a substitute plan? So what I will do is, is work with across party lines right. down in Washington, D.C. to come up with solutions. We, we know it's an issue, but back to what I said, I, 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 I could never see myself as a leader yep. standing in front of the people that I led saying thank you for paying off my loans. Okay. I just can't see it. Should a portion of student loans be forgiven, income-based? Uh, well, I'm a data-driven decision maker, Gene, and when that policy first came out, I don't think they made their case financially okay. because obviously those loan paybacks help to fund more loans for more students. So they interrupted that whole cycle of, of a huge financial uh, resource. Right. So they didn't make their case to do it in the first place, at least not financially. Uh, but I do agree, if you're getting a degree in sociology or history as opposed to uh, cybersecurity or something that's in higher demand, okay. you should be capped at how much that degree it will return to you, it, it return on right. investment. And I, I think that our, our students and our families of students needed to be protected from that because I think they were taken advantage of. Okay. And so I, I think I agree, working across the aisle on a case-by-case -case basis to help those who are now struggling because of that. And you know, you've got students getting yeah. out with an English degree with six figures of debt. That's not even reasonable. Do you have a plan that you would, maybe an alternative plan? Uh, Congressman Cicilline suggested pay it back interest-free income-based. It never got anywhere. Pay it back, in, uh, uh, interest-free, income-based, 
sounds intriguing enough to talk about. I'd want to see the numbers and how that would look for all stakeholders. Okay, let's talk about guns. I know you've spoken out about gun rights and gun ownership. Go ahead and make your, your uh, case plain for us. I, I, I didn't realize I, I spoke out about it, but uh, well, I, I have been I, I, I have thought I've heard you in, or read perhaps something. Well, uh, what, you, what support, a, you support what, a gun owner's what, rights. What, 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 I, what I believe, Gene, is, is I took an oath every time I got promoted to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That included our civil liberties. Mm -hmm. All right, which includes this. I'm also a father of four, and, and I would never want to put my kid on a school bus and, and, and wonder if they're coming home. I absolutely believe there's a way to work across party lines down here, come up with common sense solutions that work for all Americans. That one, protect our civil liberties, yep. but also protect our children. All right, so you're not, a, uh, you're not uh, adverse to a, a compromise, but I, I believe I read or, or had heard you. You believe in gun, owner, gun owner's rights? I, I, I do believe in gun okay. owner's rights. Ab oh. a, 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 absolutely. I've been a proud gun owner my entire okay. life. Got my hunting license when I was 12 years old. I believe in responsible gun ownership, and, and I, I don't think it's, it's folks that are responsible gun owners that, right. that are causing some of the problems we see in our nation. I do think we have a mental health problem that needs to be addressed. Okay. There might be a resource issue. And we can talk about those in Congress, and we can work, work in a bipartisan fashion to do just that. Let me just get Terry's answer on that. Are you a gun owner? Do you believe in gun ownership rights? I believe that the Second Amendment is a, an issue of law. Again, as a data-driven decision maker, okay. um, the Bill of Rights, um, is very clear that it is illegal to take firearms from law-abiding citizens. Okay. We do have a right to self-defense, okay. and it's enshrined in the Constitution. And, and just uh, 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 Gary is open to maybe some sort of a compromise, not against everything that the Democrats might come up with. Can I put you down for the same thing? You would work with the other side? Uh, definitely. I think that the, the approaches need to uh, include not burdening those who are looking to own firearms legally, but focusing on those populations that may be seeking to own firearms illegally. Those would be the criminals or those who are uh, motivated and right. encouraged by violence in the media. Uh, and I think that the non-regulatory approaches should also be looked at. Okay. There are many successful programs. If I could just make I just some got suggestions. About ten or fifteen seconds. Okay. We got to get the closing. Um, just quick, quickly. Yeah, I'd say nonviolence community programs, gun buyback programs, and definitely an increase in mental health support. Okay, very good. It's time for closing statements. I, it kind of flew by. Uh, <laughs> by uh, coin toss, uh, Terry Flynn, you go first. Address camera two for us and okay. tell us why should we send you to Congress. Well, I, I, the reason I'm running and that you should send me to Congress is because. Uh, as I said, people are disengaging from the U.S. Uh, political environment. They, they don't want to participate. They don't, there's no trust. And I'm offering an alternate candidate, a citizen candidate. I uh, am not an attorney. I'm not a CEO. I, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, what I do offer is uh, experience, uh, experience on uh, Middletown Town Council for four years. I, I served on the planning board. I know a little bit about uh, comprehensive plans and municipal budgets and zoning codes and Rhode Island general laws. And uh, the Middletowners that, that know me and know town issues, they will tell you that I listen to uh, citizens. That was my byline in my grassroots campaigns, the, a leader that listens. And they know that I uh, will serve them and I will speak with their voice uh, at the federal level. Very good. Terry, thank you. Uh, same thing for you, Gary Leonard. Just address camera two and tell us why we should send you to Washington. Gene, thank you, thank you for having us on today. Uh, hi. I, I, I am running for for U.S. Congress because, because I do not like the direction our country's going. Uh, I long haven't liked the way our, our state has been governed. Um, I believe in what I see in Washington, D.C., a clear, a clear need for leadership. For 30 years, I served the United States Marine Corps. I commanded Marines up through the level of Colonel, colonel every, along the way. I will also tell you that uh, during, in my capacity in the Marine Corps, I served in a number of key assignments. One of those would include being the chief of staff of Marine Forces Reserve, a 100,000 person organization spread across the United States and in Puerto Rico. In that capacity, I helped provide military relief support to local authorities in Texas, down on the Gulf Coast, and in Florida. Lastly, I will tell you I served as General Petraeus' plans chief. I don't think there's any other candidate in this campaign that understands how to 
take diplomacy, information, military, and Thank economy you, and put it together. Thank you very much. Uh, it's not easy to debate. I appreciate both of you coming in here. Good luck with your campaign. Thank you so much, Gene. Appreciate this public service. Thank you very Gene, much. Thank you. Thank you. Just sit there for a second. We're going to close the show here. Thank you, candidates. A reminder, early voting is already underway, and the primary is Tuesday, September 5th. Democrats running is set to debate Thursday, August 31st, and Friday, September 1st at 4 o'clock, right here on NBC10. Fair and balanced. That's our debate for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.